You are listening to KZUTLP 99.1 FM, Los Angeles, California. This is Lava Radio. My name is Tade. And my name is Brian. And we've got some very, very special guests with us. A couple members of the Los Angeles band Chud. If you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Yali. And what do you play? I play drums and I sing. And I also recorded some guitar and synth on the album. And my name is Jason Funston. Oh, my name's Yali Bitan. I didn't know we were doing last names. <laughs> what, do you, what do you play, Jason? I play bass and I sing. Nice. nice. And there's one more member in the band, right? Yeah, Stephanie, we call her Sloza. Um, she, yeah, she's out of town right now, but she plays guitar and she also mixed and produced the album. Awesome. Nice, and right now we are in the studio that you guys practice at. Did you guys record it here as well? No, this is just our practice space. Nice. We recorded it at uh, Sloza's school. She went to LA Recording School and at our buddy Nico's house. Very cool, nice. And Nico Eden, right? Yeah, or Nico yeah. Eden? Eden? Yeah, Eden? I'm not sure how. Yeah, to we've played a couple of their songs on uh, nice. a couple of the past shows, yeah. Nice. And so we're going to be discussing, we're going to be listening throughout the show. Usually we do trivia um, throughout the show, and Brian and I go head-to-head -head with that. But throughout the show, we're going to be listening to the debut album, right, of Chud, called Chud, the self-titled album. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about ourselves, or uh, about everybody. <laughs> we're going to talk about ourselves. Um, cool. So do you guys want to tell us a little bit about the album? Yeah, uh -huh. leave the talking about ourselves to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the album, we just dropped it on 420. Uh, it was our two-year anniversary of being a band. Our very first show was two years ago, 420, 2017. It was at a house show. Album release show was at a house show, so it felt very appropriate. Um, yeah, it's songs that we've been working on for a while. Nice. And uh, yeah, we finally got them out there. Pretty hyped for everyone to hear it. Nice, so it's been a project that's been two years in the making. Yeah, nice. pretty much exactly. Like we started as a band about a week before that show mm -hmm. and we wrote like one song and then during the week we wrote like three more nice. and we played a show very cool we just kept writing kept playing and how'd you guys all meet was it uh through just playing in the scene and stuff or did you, have you guys known each other previous to chud i played a show with yali when I was in high school, we were in two separate bands and we met each other very briefly, but it wasn't until my senior year of high school in summer 2015 when we were both asked by someone to be in a band and we just met like formally in that band. He played drums, I played bass. Nice. Yeah, we were brought together. So that's how me and Jason met. And then, well, we kind of knew Sloza because she works at The Smell. She's been doing sound there for like a few years. Uh, and then we like, for, we like really came together at this one Paranoids show at The Echo. Um, we just like met and started talking and hanging out. And then uh, Jason and I used to play in a band called Jane Lane. Mm -hmm. And then we went on tour to South by Southwest with Sloza's other band, Wajadu. Mm -hmm. And then on that tour, we kind of got closer. And then we were like in the practice space together and we just started jamming and it became Chud. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a branch off of a whole, a bunch of different projects almost. Yeah. 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 Super cool. Um, when, uh, I guess I'm curious about like, well, I, I think I'll save that question for once we get into the album. Um, in the two years you guys have been playing shows, what would you say is the most memorable or like something that like stood out from one of the shows? Uh, I would say our most memorable one is a recent one. Mm. It was April 12th at El Cid with uh, Meat Body. Oh, right, yeah. Previous size. I was... I was out of town for that. I was really bummed. I yeah. And Chunks, yeah. And, and the it Chunks. It was a great show. It was, it was a really yeah. awesome show. But um, another one would be earlier this year at the factory we played with Frankie and the Witch Fingers. Oh, yeah. I was there, that one. That was a good show. Yeah. It, it, that was a great show. It's fun to play those big shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like big crowds where like you could just see like a bunch of people are into it. And I don't know, but like, I, don't, I pretty much have fun at almost every show. Like, I just get into the drum zone. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, as long as my performance is good, I had a great show. Nice. 
And does that kind of... Did you have another? Does that kind of live aspect of it, of like liking to play shows, did that go into the recording process of the album itself? Because it sounds very like raw, it sounds very, almost like it was performed live. Yeah, it was about like half and half in terms of live and overdubs. Like for the most part, uh, we, we would play it live and get like the drums and bass track and then kind of overdub the guitars and stuff. Nice. But yeah, it definitely comes from a lot of live just like grinding and like playing together a lot because there are a lot of a lot of time changes and tempo changes and stuff that like we initially tried doing it on a metronome and like track by track but it didn't work at all because it's just like so like you just got to be in sync and like on every little beat mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's definitely some like some great changes in the album as far as like rhythms and melodies go um why don't we play one or two tracks and come back for the rest of the interview? Let's do it. So the song that has been playing in the background is the first song on the album called Born. Um, we're just gonna play it full now so that you can hear it from the start. Thank you. 
And we're back. You're listening to Lava Radio on KZUT LP 99.1 FM Los Angeles. That track you just heard was uh, called Moodoo. And before that was Stunted. Slunted. Slunted, I'm sorry. The, the track Come on. is very far away. And uh, the first one is called Born. Um, so that song we just heard, Moodoo, it says the band's name a lot. Um, is there, I guess, uh, is there a general like uh, concept or, uh, or uh, yeah, like a concept for the either the album or the band itself? We want to know what is Chud. What is it? <laughs> is it an acronym? Um, it's definitely not an acronym. Okay. We we get a lot of people asking if it's re- like a reference to the '80s movie. Uh, we didn't know it existed before we started the band. We didn't know there are like a few other things called Chud out there. We, I promise you, did not know of any of them. <laughs> okay, so that w- explains how on your uh, band camp it says you're playing in Australia next month. <laughs> 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 Unless you have a big uh, date you're about to announce. I'm, no, I think that that must be the New York Chud. Oh. Yeah, New there's York a Chud. New York Chud that opened for suicidal tendencies. Oh, wow. But we opened for me bodies, so. <laughs> so yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, the band, I don't know, it kind of just came about as a joke. Like, on, I was mentioning we were on South by Southwest, and we were out there, you know, just doing what um, young punk rockers do <laughs> on tour, and... Are you? Are we allowed to mention drugs on here? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, weed's legal, right? Yeah, totally. We were smoke. We were smoking pot. <laughs> we were smoking a lot of pot and laughing, and we were in Austin, Texas, and I think we just, yeah, it just kind of came to us, yeah. and it was kind of you know this like concept that it's like, it's not like yeah, this is the band where Chud. It's like Chud is kind of this entity this kind of demon, happy, uh, overworld, overlord type person. And he's kind of energy is channeled through us and into the music. And we're kind of just his vessels. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it kind of, I, I was, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say we act somewhat as prophets for the word. So as far as the lyrical content, that's most of what we're talking about. We have a song called, for example, Servitude. It's all about the servitude towards Chad. I see, I see. And the lyrics are both, I mean, they're full of meaning, but they're also like meaningless. It's kind of just some silly stuff we came up with. Kind of just like we imagine these like, like, you know, old timey battles and stuff. It's like the, you know, we have this song called The Green Army. It's kind of like the, uh, the, what do you call them? Just like the enemies of Chad. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, How have you, like seen Chud with your own eyes before, or is that the the name? That's the name of the god, right? Or the, the yeah, being? The, okay. the entity. It's, yeah, the entity. I mean, we believe in no gods and no masters. I like that. Okay. But I mean, we Chud is our lord. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you had any like experiences like outside of playing music? Like, did Chud, you know, join you for breakfast or something like that? No, it's it's not like that. He's not like it's not like a guy who comes and shows up at brand practice, you know. <laughs> it's like it's just kind of a feeling that we get sometimes. And so what would that feeling kind of be? So if, if Chud is sort of representative of like an entity or something like that mm-hmm. and you guys are channeling a certain energy through it, what what would those energies be? Well it's like evil but it's funny. Sure, yeah. It's like, there's definitely a little bit of humor in the band. You know, we, we take it pretty seriously, of course. We're like, we care about the music and everything, but the concept, we're not, you know, we're not waxing political here or anything. We're just kind of like writing songs about these silly characters. Totally. And just kind of making it sound cool. Yeah. No, I like that. Because there is sort of a, like, ethereal feeling to the album where it does feel like you're in a kind of another world it's a different yeah. setting nice. and i think it's that also gets represented in the album artwork too it's just this kind of um this world that's kind of dark you know yeah. right. um, who, who made the the art yeah. Our friend zach Bytel actually painted it um or it's like markers and watercolors mm-hmm. and yeah for those of you who haven't seen it for those listening at home it's kind of you see these uh 
a forest, but it's been burned down, and you just see a red sky, and then kind of out of the trees, out of like the burnt, um, the burnt branches, it kind of says Chud in like that hardcore metal font. Yeah, it kind of looks like a bunch of twigs. That's hard mm-hmm. to read, but it's pretty easy to read on ours because it's only four letters. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, I think um, I think that's that's interesting with the entity. Yeah, it's supposed to be kind of like the the aftermath of the Great War of Chud. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when you recall the the War of Chud, um, how how do you find the lyrics, or, or I guess do you start with uh, like guitar, or do you start with bass, or how does oh, the, yeah. the you want to start us with this songwriting? I mean, lyrics are the last thing that comes. Yeah. I think for every song. We, so so you're saying that the songs are written. Uh, when you're thinking about the the Battle of Chud, or it's is there like oh are they odes or like <laughs> historical would, references? Yeah, we start with the instrumentals, and then mm. based on how those instrumentals sound and how they make us feel, we apply the lyrics based on what Chud tells us to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't do it the other way. Yeah, <laughs> very dangerous. Nice. Well, why don't we get into the second little segment of um, of the music listening? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so, starting off this next um, one, we'll listen to "In the Eye," um, and here it is. Yeah. 
All right, we are back with Lava Radio with our special guest today, Chud. Got Yali and Jason in the building. Uh, you're listening to KZUT 99.1 FM, um, Lava Radio. That previous song you just heard was the Orakai March. The Orakai March. Yeah. Um, and before Named that, after our good friend Mork Orakai. Okay. That's not his real name, but that's his Chud okay. name. It's our friend Mark Soleimani. Uh-huh. Yeah, we actually forgot to mention it earlier, but he sometimes plays with us when he's in town. He's kind of like our secret fourth member. Nice. Secret Where, yeah. Where's he from? He's from here, but mm-hmm. he goes to school in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, okay, nice. So, yeah, when he's here on breaks, he plays with us. He That's plays awesome. guitar. Very and nice. He recorded on the album. Cool. What songs were um, he featured in? Um, he played... For sure on Moodoo and Slunted, and I think In the Eye. Yes, Yeah. those three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, those three. Awesome. Well, so, yeah, the song you heard before the Orakai March was Green Army, and starting off that set? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, starting off that set was In the Eye. Um, really great album. I, lo- I, lo- I love hearing it because it's all very cohesive, you know? It's like, um, it all makes sense together. And going back to like what we were talking about, about like that Chud entity, it just, it really shines through um, from song to song. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the recording process with you guys and um, how that sort of went down and where you guys recorded it. And um, I think I mentioned in the top of the interview that it seems very, uh, it's really raw um, and it really encapsulates a lot of the energy of the song itself. And it's not, it doesn't sound too stripped down or bare or anything. It's really full. So do you guys want to tell me a little bit about that? Tell us a little bit about that. Where did you guys record? Uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. I think I might have mentioned earlier, we recorded it, uh, pe- like parts of it at LA Recording School with uh, Sloz's professor, Jimmy Fahe. He helped engineer it. Um, all the drums were done there. So like, you know, he has a huge part to play in the sound of the album. And yeah, I mean, for that, you know, it's all live drums with drums you can't really go in and like put a measure in because I mean it just doesn't work that way um so yeah like he helped out a lot with that and we did the bass live there as well you know DI and mic'd it up and we just played at the same time and that was pretty crucial for a lot of the uh like speed down and slow or speed up and slow down sections like you heard in that last song sure um yeah and then the rest of it we recorded at Nico Eden studio um, yeah, it's just like a home studio, and we just did it like track by track. So you said you started off with the drums and the bass together? Yeah. And then added guitar elements? And well, interestingly, we the recording process was almost like two big days, where we did like half the album on one day, and then the second half on uh, the second recording day. And the first day, I remember we did just drums, at LA recording and then we had done bass at Nico's so half of the album is um, like drum like drums and bass are separate but then for the second half of the album we decided because a lot of the songs were um, tough to do with a metronome and that'd be easier to lock in if we could do bass and drums it's like the skeleton of the songs like the core uh, so we decided to do the second half of the album, bass and drums live, and then guitar and, and vocals, and vocals and synth as well. Yeah, synth is only on one track that's on Moodoo. I recorded that part at Slows' house, mm-hmm. so three places. And so when you say, sorry, uh, when you say recorded the first half of the album, do you mean the first layer of all the songs, or you recorded? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. not like uh, sequentially. Sure, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. just, yeah, kind of, yeah. Nice, so it's kind of two parts adding the layers on top of each yeah. other. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Uh, I wanted to ask about, like, the sound. Um, what was your, like, process as far as, like, finding, you know, pedals or, like, you know, knobs on the amp and things like that? Like, uh, what, what kind of sound were you going for? And did it end up how you thought it would go? Yeah, well, on bass, I, I'm trying to sound as heavy <laughs> as possible. So I, like, specifically for this band, got a ridiculously big <laughs> pedal board in the hopes of putting a bunch of <laughs> different pedals. Like, I, I have it's a It's almost big, as big as his head. <laughs> it's, it's bigger. 
I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it's it's freaking huge. <laughs> but it's it's like distortion, uh, fuzz. I have a phaser on there for an extra layer. Flanger delay. Yeah, flanger. Um, chorus. Uh, yes, and uh, a rusty box, a mm. tronographic rusty box. A That's tuner like, with two buttons, if you nice. can believe it. Yes. So, the. Uh, I, for me on bass, I wanted to stand out as much as possible. It's a, a lot of bass players like to go clean, and I thought it'd be interesting to um, not so much be a, a lead bassist, but to have that sort of lead tone and a distinct tone. Right. So I try to dial that in on my pedal board and get that like heavy you know crunchy tone yeah and it is really apparent in a lot of the songs like it's a it's just as equal as the guitar and bass yeah it's a very mm -hmm. bass heavy album mostly because mm -hmm. like usually jason and i write the songs mm -hmm. or like we we write like the beginning of the songs usually like drums and bass or sometimes i'll play a little bit of guitar but yeah usually one of us comes in with a riff and we like work on it sometimes like we add like different odd time stuff into it but yeah so yeah, it's a lot of like bass and drums, and then the guitars we kind of add on top of that. And that's like me and Sloza have kind of like developed together, just like different parts. Like some parts, she just goes like full noise mode, just like doing different things, like pushing the limits of the guitar and the pedals. And then the other half is like parts that I'll write and then teach to her. And a lot of the times, uh, there's like this one pedal that I have that can do a bunch of different stuff. We like preload different effects onto there that are like specific for the song to get like really specific tones and mm -hmm. yeah like we put a lot of thought into it because I mean yeah I, I don't even I wouldn't even say that we exactly sound like our influences because I mean me personally like I don't even really listen to that much like super heavy music but like it's just really fun to make right. just like get like super distorted and loud and fast and just have like this crazy amount of energy and mm -hmm. also have it be like dark and kind of spooky yeah mm -hmm. kind of on the way over here we were kind of trying to pinpoint uh like influences you guys might have are there any like major influences that, that well, stand first out yes <laughs> what were what were you thinking we won't take offense well i it was it was hard for me to um it was hard for me to find like a uh, like an actual sound like band of a band. I kind of like the I, the when I was thinking about it, the ethos of like Captain Beefheart, some of his records that are like not like some of them are like out like kind of out there, but like um, I guess like there's a there's just like a direction that's like at the not the most taken. I, I guess. Interesting. Um, I've never listened but, to him. Yeah, his there's a lot that you don't have to listen to, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to, to pinpoint a, a single band, I think. Um, Should we just start listing bands? Well, yeah. If, I mean, if you want to shout out some bands that you that have inspired you, I guess. I mean, as far as bands that like all three of us really are heavy into that kind of influence just like all of us together, I would say like Slint mm -hmm. is up there, Palm. Yeah. Um, was I gonna say Primus? Primus, yeah. Oh yeah. Primus, yeah. We used to do a cover of a Primus song while we were still, you know, filling mm -hmm. out our set list. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're super that, bass yeah. heavy and just yeah, like kind that. of a different sort of tone to their music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting. It uh, well, no, I mean, I was just gonna keep going, but. Uh, did you have a question, Daddy? Well, yeah, no, I was just gonna say it's um, it's cool how every element is not dry. There's not a single dry element, even the vocals. Um, and it's not just like, you know, it doesn't just have reverb on it or something. The vocals are heavily processed as well. Um, but that's all done through pedal work, right? It's all... Uh, I mean, well, the vocal distortion, mm -hmm. we do have a pedal that sometimes we could use live, mm -hmm. but on the album, it's all like digitally distorted. Cool, nice. But so yeah, that's kind of because I mean, it's me and Jason singing. Sometimes it's just me or just Jason, or sometimes both of us. But we kind of, we didn't want it to be like, oh, this is Yali's song, this is Jason's song. It's like, these are all Chud songs. Mm -hmm. So we wanted the that kind of distorted, we kind of put a low filter on it. It's like, it's Chud's voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that sort of, that sort of uh, transcendental sort of idea even goes into the recording process, it, it feels very almost like selfless. 
it's like the, you guys aren't individual members of a band. You guys are all one piece playing yeah, that's for, kind of the for idea. each other. Yeah. yeah, it's not, and it's not really about like ego. It's not like, oh, like I want a drum solo so I could show off. It's like if there's, I mean, there's one song that has you know a little drum solo. It kind of just like it fits the song. It's just like where we were going. And like Jason's got a solo. Like we all have, you know. It's and it's not like a solo in the you know typical sense where it's like four chords are being held down and then someone's shredding on top. Like all the pieces that are like a, a showcase of one of the members' abilities are like very kind of like kind of woven into the song. Yeah, the project's definitely a collaboration. It's not one of our projects, and then the the others are just playing in it. Right. It's right. all of ours. It's awesome. And did that um, come through in the recording process? While you guys were recording, were there parts added on? Were you guys kind of going in and out of ideas that were more solid than the other? Or were you guys kind of adjusting as it was going along as well? Um, I feel like we went into the recording process pretty much knowing what we wanted it to sound like. like it sounds pretty similar to how we sound live. Um, they're just like a they're just like a very few like small guitar parts. There's like some stuff that I added on there that um, that like we don't have live because we, we need two guitars for it. So sometimes when Mark is in town and he's playing, he'll fill in those parts and like then it sounds like super duper layered. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean just like me, Jason, and Sloza, like I don't know, we we make big sound. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially on a good s system. I was thinking about the the show at the factory that I saw. The I mean they have a pretty beefy system and yeah. it all it was all very you know clear and but very like you know heavy and lots of parts and yeah that's that's what i like about you guys it stands out and yeah i had a guy come up to us after our most recent smell show mm -hmm. and he was like i closed my eyes and it sounded like there were like 10 musicians playing yeah. i opened my eyes and there were just three of you yeah yeah, yeah that's being, great sounding big is a big part of mm -hmm. our uh i guess yeah tone or what we're trying to communicate sonically right at, at every show i try to bring my eight by ten bass amp nice. that's eight <laughs> and, by ten inch speakers <laughs> and we i mean we'll play like backyard shows our, our very first show i brought <laughs> An eight by ten wow. bass amp <laughs> to, a to, to a backyard. It was a backyard. the The stage was like just a piece of wood that the drums were on that completely absorbed all the sound. And we played. We had two extra members for that show just because it was our first one. We just really wanted to go all all out. So it was the drums, and there were like four amps in front of me. And after the show, I talked to some people, and they were like, "It was so loud, I couldn't hear the drums." Oh, <laughs> yeah. Which was pretty amazing. So that's pretty much the vibe we try to go for every time. Yeah, it's <laughs> a good. Um... But we we VQ'd it a little bit better. Yeah, nice. <laughs> that was that was my first show using it. So mm -hmm. of course I like. Had the bass way up, oh, and it was yeah. just like <laughs> it was. It was so. <laughs> it was so intense. I, um, I I love bringing it to shows. It's just difficult because I drive a sedan. Oh yeah. And Yali is such a great bandmate. He helps me <laughs> lift this thing into the back of my mom's Audi. Nice. Wow. And she absolutely hates when I put amps she in there. Yelled at us yesterday. <laughs> we oh, we played a show yesterday. Got yelled at for that. Because the last car we had, the amp is so big, it like barely fits through the through the door. So like the whole like door handle and like the armrest is like, like on the, the last window. car. It was like scratched and like oh, ripped got up. Scuffed up, and it's a lease. And oh, it's a lease. No. Yeah. So, um, so his mom was pissed. Yeah, she, she was pissed. She doesn't. The thing is, we have the eight by ten at the space, mm -hmm. so we're able to sneak the eight by ten into the new Audi, the new lease. Nice. My mom doesn't Mrs. know. Mrs. Funston, please don't listen. Yeah, she she doesn't know about that. But, okay. uh, well, yeah. we won't tell her either. <laughs> I'm gonna send her the link to this episode. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> Nice. And uh, I guess just the last question that I got, unless you got some questions. Oh, it's going to be the last uh, round before. No, no, we got some more questions after, oh, but okay. about the recording. Was this kind of the first studio album you guys put together yourselves? Or have you guys done albums in the past before? Are you guys familiar with the recording process? Personally? Yeah. Uh, I haven't recorded in a studio studio. I've done other projects like like DIY recording, like DI and, you know, people miking it up. But I would say for me personally, this was like the most legitimate recording session that I've done. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I would say it was the most legit for me as well. I have recorded in studios in the past, and I've recorded like on a few different albums with different bands over the years. Um, and I like make my own recordings at home just with garage bands. So I was a little bit more um, like I knew kind of what I was getting into getting into it. But I mean, Sloza was a huge help. She went to LA recording school, so you know she knows how to do all the sound engineering and stuff. She mixed it all herself in like a week. Nice. nice. That's awesome. Should yeah. we get into this? Yeah, let's get into the last round of, of music here. Uh, you're listening to Lava Radio with Chud. Oh, and the... I can't read that. Uh, so next song that we're going to hear is... Untervaltz. Untervaltz, yeah. Unter Untervaltz. It's spelled like waltz, but we pronounce it German. Oh, Untervaltz. Untervaltz. Okay, here we go.
you are listening to Lava Radio. Um, thanks for joining us. That was really interesting hearing about the album. We got Chud in the house. Um, that sorry. That last song you heard was Chud, the from the album Chud. <laughs> yeah, it's a three of a kind. And before that was Servitude, and before that was Untervolts. Untervolts. Um, yeah, thanks so much for joining us and talking about the album. What's um, next for you guys? Uh, I got dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about, like, uh, what's going on next with Chud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we released this album. We're taking some time in the summer to, uh, you know, start writing the next album. Nice. Uh, we have a show on June 1st at Time War Records with Chill Trigger, Lucky Wife and Mother, and Duderella. Nice, nice. Where can we find your music? Uh, Our music is everywhere on all streaming platforms that we know of, (laughs) including the biggest ones are Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, YouTube, CD Baby. VK. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There are probably a few other ones that we're on. We did it through one of those digital distribution services. Awesome. But yeah, nice. you can find it anywhere. Um, I know like the Bandcamp and SoundCloud links are Chud420 at those respective sites. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram at Chud Chud Chud. With periods in between, we got links in the bio, and you could keep up to date with any upcoming shows. Awesome. Sounds good. Is there any last things you guys want to talk about? Any shout-outs or, um, I don't know, anything on to in my your mind? mom and my girlfriend and my dad and his wife and my sister and my grandparents and That's my sweet. uncles and nice. aunts and all my friends. <laughs> And yeah, shout out to my family as well. Sweet. So, yeah, you guys wouldn't be here without them. So <laughs> we, we should be thanking. We should get them on the next show. Yeah. Next See. next episode, Chud's yeah. parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this has been a fun hour. Um, thanks so much for joining us. You have been listening to Lava Radio on 99.1 KZUT FM. Um, you, if you have any questions about Lava, you can get a hold of us at lavalleyart at gmail.com. If you have questions about the station, you can get a hold of us at kzutla at gmail.com. Um, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Hell yeah. All right. Oh, yeah.